Hi, I'm Jenny Edwards. I specialize in a topic that is a little difficult for a lot of people to talk or even think about, and that is the subject of animal sexual abuse and exploitation. It is the um, sexual interaction between humans and animals. I am um, by training and by experience a criminologist, but that's a mouthful. So you might consider me most uh, as a researcher and uh, trainer of law enforcement enforcement officers and um, other individuals who are focused on the criminal justice system. The Journal of um, Psychiatry and the Law is specifically aimed at uh, psychological or mental health professionals who do those forensic exams for that are, that are court ordered, ordered by the court for uh, someone to have an evaluation and or treatment and to determine whether they're a violent predator or uh, someone at high risk to reoffend, for example. Very little research had been done. There were no guidelines for me to draw from to say when someone would say to me, this is very rare behavior or ask me the question, how prevalent is this behavior? There really wasn't a good answer. So one of the things that I began to do is to collect that data uh, to try and understand whether this was just something in my own head or whether it was something that could be documented that it did happen more often than maybe we realized it did. So I began to focus specifically and exclusively on uh, any incidents that uh, where animal sexual abuse was suspected, reported, or a person had been arrested or convicted for that behavior, including, and I include in that definition, um, any collection or any incidents of um, animal pornography in a collection of child pornography, for example. The data collection process, frankly, was very difficult. Um, people not only don't want to talk about this, they don't want to write about it. So my first thought was to gather uh, every incidence I could find where uh, a, an arrest had been reported by the news media or any suspicion had been reported by the by the news media. Not every uh, report gets investigated. Uh, not every investigation turns into a prose prosecution. So I collected as many uh, media reports as I can find. I extended the media reports by Order, by asking for court documents that related to any arrest or conviction. I defined it broadly to include um, in older cases where the person was charged with animal cruelty or uh, public indecency or uh, lewd and lascivious behavior or some other thing, or sometimes even trespass. But the reason for that charge was because there was no bestiality law but bestiality is what triggered the arrest. I included those in my study. So the resulting data set that I analyzed um, comprised 456 event individuals who um, were arrested for direct sexual contact with an animal, um, indirect contact um, where they may have observed or, or um, aided facilitated someone else in having sex with an animal, attempted contact where perhaps they advertised in um, social media to either obtain an animal for sex or to uh, watch someone else have sex with an animal, typically a, a female partner, or for the production, collection, or distribution of pornography depicting sex acts between a person and an animal. So my criteria was defined very broadly because of the limited number of, uh, of individuals that I could that I could find, arrests that I could find to study. What I found was, first of all, animal sex, ab sex abuse happens everywhere. It doesn't just happen in the countryside. It happens all over the country, in cities, in towns, in villages, in rural areas. It happens in apartments. It happens in backyards. It happens in public facilities like uh, like uh, like stables, rent stables. Um, it happens uh, with the neighbor's animal. Both men and women commit offenses. Juveniles commit offenses. Although I did not report on them in the study, I did find them in the data. More than half of them, 53 percent 
of all of the individuals in my study, the 456 people, 53% of them had a criminal history that frequently involved sexual assault, either of an animal or of a person. It involved uh, property type offenses like, uh, like trespass, criminal trespass. Um, there were theft, theft of property, theft of animals, um, kidnapping appeared, other crimes like interpersonal violence, uh, domestic violence between couples, um, assault and battery between um, people who knew each other. Animal sex, sex abuse may also be a factor in uh, serial homicide, uh, serial killings, um, sexual homicide, uh, murder after or during or because of a sex act. It was very interesting to note that the wide range of criminal acts that were committed. Probably the most significant act though, that was both in the criminal history as well in the current incidents and in some cases in future incident, future uh, arrests that happened beyond the incident I studied was the fact that 45.6% of the individuals in the study, that's almost half of the people in the study had committed either child sexual abuse or child exploitation. They either collected child pornography, directly sexually abused a child, or had a sexual another sexual crime involving another adult. 34.5% of the um, individuals collected child pornography as well as animal pornography. 32% of them also directly sexually abused children. In other words, in addition to having sex with the animal, in the incident that caused them to be arrested, they also sexually abused a child. A number of those children were forced to have sex with the, the family animal, typically the family dog, which left a lasting legacy for them. Another significant finding was that 28% of the 456 people in my study reoffended. Uh, at some later point in time, they committed a second or beyond um, sexual offense with an animal. 12% of the incidents involved or resulted in significant injury or death of the animal. Um, at least one study indicated that about a quarter of the 23% uh, actually of the sexual murderers in, uh, interviewed admitted that they had uh, previously had sexual contact with an animal. Um, one, uh, several studies actually, about six of them, uh, came to pretty much the same conclusion that about a third of whatever group they were looking at um, in terms of sex offenders, juvenile and adult um, abuse, sexual abusers of both adults and children, about a third of them uh, admitted to having previously had some form of sexual contact with an animal. As far as we know, very few of those cases actually came to the attention of law enforcement or were ever they were the person was never arrested for that specific behavior because the child abuse or the rape tended to take priority. Another finding of, of other studies of earlier studies are that among people who collect and view uh, adult pornography and other forms of pornography, uh, about 27% of them also collect animal pornography. They may not be sexually interested in animals. It may just be a part of their collection, but it's an important thing to note because it, it gives you an idea of how often people are accessing this information. And if you did a Google search today on animal pornography or bestiality pornography, you would get millions, millions of hits instantly on people, which indicates that there's there's pretty significant interest in, in looking at those images. The findings are consistent with bestiality is more serious than we realized it was. It's, it's a much more serious behavior than we realized. Animal sexual abuse and exploitation, pornography, are significantly linked to uh, human sexual abuse and exploitation. 